We have this story from the Post Millennial. Newly appointed special counsel David Weiss moves to drop Hunter's plea deal. Weiss dropped the plea deal that had been in the works with Hunter's Hunter Biden in Delaware over tax crimes and a gun charge. Now, I'm not saying that uh, he's going to get punished as he he's going to face accountability. But I believe because of the tremendous pressure that we have placed covering the story and talking about Biden's uh, Hunter Biden's plea deal, they are now forced to actually pursue some kind of real charges against Hunter Biden. Granted, I don't think he's going to get the charges he should get. It's still probably going to be a slap on the wrist, but he's not getting that sweetheart perfect immunity deal. Judge wouldn't wouldn't fall for it. The the public hears about it. There's a there's a big eruption and now they're forced to be like, "Okay, we we've actually got to charge this guy for the crimes he's doing." So I do think it's fair to say pressure forces them to make that move. They know there's a boundary they can't cross and that's where we need to be. If the issue is we're playing a game a board game and they keep cheating and making up fake rules, we just need to eventually say, no, you can't do that. Move our piece back to where it's supposed to be and force them to acknowledge they're going to have to play by the rules, too. I think if we keep this pressure up, we look at Bud Light, we look at Sound of Freedom, we look at Hunter losing his plea deal. We can see that the pressure is on and it does work. Yeah, I I, I totally agree with what you're saying about um, about forcing them to essentially play by the rules that we want to establish because they've been essentially making the rules up as they go, which is something that I've been kind of harping on recently, like just the whole philosophy thing. If the the people that are on the left t tend not to have a, a philosophy that, you know, believes that engaging uh, good faith is actually the proper course of action. If you don't have, uh, you know, people that want to engage with, want to engage with you in good faith, then you can't make a, you know, you can't actually argue a position and come to an agreement. It's all just a power game. So I think that, I that's it that's probably what you got to do i mean i see the david weiss thing as more of a performative thing i mean this guy you know it seems like he's gonna give what hunter Biden off the hook um without you know uh, you know obviously a slap on the wrist wrist as it's, you said i mean he's a it's republican gonna be worse than what he was gonna get right right i well he, he's a republican so they you know it's like the same exact uh playbook as like the robert Mueller investigation they try to you know, pretend that this guy is impartial, that he's respected by both sides of the aisle. You know, this guy is an institutionalist and so I, on I, and so I, forth. So, um, you know, I, I, that's that's how I see I, it. I, I get that. But they were trying to give Hunter Biden blanket immunity. Right. That got pulled off the table. Mm -hmm. They're probably now groaning, being like, damn, it didn't work. OK, well, we'll, we'll get our guy in there and we'll, we'll claim he's a Republican. And then they're still going to have to give Hunter Biden something worse than he was going to get. Mm -hmm. My point is only is I don't think we're we've won. But we've certainly taken some territory in forcing them to acknowledge, like, hey, that deal was bad. They tried to pull a fast one. Now they're going to try and still pull some kind of fast one, but they've lost ground. Mm -hmm. So that's still good. You got to take small victories where you can. I think, first of all, I don't think he should be, I got to be honest, Hunter Biden should not have been charged for the gun thing. Like, Second Amendment rights. Mm -hmm. They're saying he lied on a form or whatever. Nah, I, if, he was, if, you're, if you're under the influence, you shouldn't be able to be carrying a weapon. Mm -hmm. If you're not, you have sound mind, you should be able to buy one. I don't like that charge at all. Lying on his tax forms, I also kind of don't like taxes. So I will only say this. <laughs> the only issue is they'll come after a regular American for those charges tenfold. Right. And right. we need to have equality under, equality under the law and, and, and accountability. I want Hunter Biden to face some serious charges. But more importantly, I, I see we've gained a, a, a couple inches here. You know, we, we've, we've moved forward a little bit. We've advanced the line. That's good. Not perfect. What we really need to see and we need intense pressure on is his illicit business dealings mm -hmm. and serving as a proxy for his dad and influence peddling. But that's going to have to come from Congress and they seem to be sitting on their hands. Yeah, I think so. I, I, I mean, yeah, it's a step in the right direction and Congress will have to act. It will have to do much more than it's already done. I mean, at this point, Congress, I mean, not to change the subject here, but they should have subpoenaed Al Alvin Bragg, the DA, um, leading this uh, indictment against Donald Trump in New York, should have uh, subpoenaed all, all these uh, prosecutors going at, against Donald Trump by now. I don't know why they have not. Um, you know, here in this case, at least David Weiss um, is at least, uh, we, we know for ex Jack Smith is a total political hack. I mean, his wife was, um, you know, donated thousands of dollars to Joe Biden, the 2020 presidential campaign. Um, she worked for a film company that had uh, financial ties, allegedly, to George Soros. So, I mean, you know, at least in this case, um, you know, they try to sh pretend like this guy is 
uh, somewhat more, you know, nonpartisan here. But then again, you know, I do think we have to raise the bar. We have to raise the standard much higher and demand much more from our congressmen. So what would you like to see happen to Hunter Biden? Um, well, I mean, Tim mentioned, you know, the, these charges, you know, <laughs> that a normal American probably um would get off the hook here or, or, or a normal American. Uh, we, we basically have to get to the business dealings with Burisma, with what we're seeing with the Tucker Carlson inst- uh, interview of, of this past week um, between David Archer and basically the connection there that, you know, Joe Biden was, um, you know, meeting with these people when, you know, taking it while he, w- he should have been meeting with the Chinese uh, prime minister. He was taking meetings with uh, Hunter Biden and his company and so on and so forth. So that's the crux of the issue. But I, I'm more my perspective on this is at least, you know, they're getting him for something. I mean, we know what the crime is. We know what the uh, problem is. We know what um, fraud he, this guy really committed against the United States. But at the very least, they're going after him for something. And I think um you know, we should be satisfied with that um, from that vantage point. Um, But then again, the pressure has to be much higher, I think, um, from our elected lawmakers. We should bring these people, we should bring David Weiss, you know, subpoena him potentially. We should question him, interrogate him. We should demand more from our government. I mean, this guy was already serving in government, which is in violation of federal law. He should not, we should not, a special counsel should not be someone with ties already to the federal government, um, with ties to the deep state, we should truly select someone um, outside of the government, which we have not done here. So that's something that uh, we should be looking at for this specific case here. But again, you know, the pressure needs to be put on these people because, as we've seen, they'll get a, they'll get away with doing anything. You know, they'll, they'll try to impeach their major political opponent. They'll try to get Donald Trump behind bars, and they're going to stop at nothing. Um, you know, to, to accomplish that goal. That is their end objective. So that's up to us, the American people, to put the pressure on them and keep them, hold their feet to the fire because if we don't, no one else will. Going back, I had a question off topic. Going back, since you're pretty knowledgeable, could Donald Trump have pardoned the January Sixers? I, that's something that he sh- should do. And I think that's something that he's looking at very strongly right now. And if he obviously is reelected in 24, he... Yeah, because I was Most wondering, did he will. have the power while he was in office to still do that? Some people question, did why didn't he do that? That's why I was. Uh, I, I mean, it's difficult. I mean, he he was being impeached at the time. We we tend to forget that he was impeached once he left office. So there's so much going on at the time um, for Donald Trump that I think that question there wasn't enough time to explore the, it. Um, the, the argument is that he didn't know. What was right. going on? He didn't. Some people. He said this is actually a really great answer. He said that uh, some of these people did bad things. They were violent and they were committing crimes. And you know, how do you have enough time with two weeks to go through all this and figure out you know who they're charging and what they're charging them with? Mm-hmm. And the people who were charged and arrested, many of them were actively violent. They went after the fact when Trump is no longer president. After a lot of the people who were walking around confused, there's no way Trump would be able to. I mean, there's thousands of people in D.C. There's no way. He's going to be able to figure out who accidentally walked on a lawn and would later be charged with very serious crimes. You've got people, uh, Brandon Strzok didn't even go in the building mm-hmm. and they and they got him criminally charged. So I think it's unfortunate. Trump maybe could have done something, but uh, it's a rock and a hard place because hundreds of thousands of people, I think, were, were down there that day at his rally. And then at the rally outside of uh, uh, there was a peaceful permitted rally outside of the Capitol. 800 or so people went inside. They're now charging not only the people who went inside, but even people who are on the Capitol grounds with being on restricted grounds or something like this. There's no way for Trump to have pardoned those guys. There's, there's too many names, too many random people. He doesn't know what they're going to charge. You can, you can, if Trump had a list of everybody who went there, if he made a website and said, send me your name right now and I will pardon you, that maybe would work. But then what? Right. He's going to go through every single name. Yeah. One guy punched a cop. You don't want to pardon that he, guy. He had two weeks between January 6th and January 20th. And you may forget, uh, they were trying to oust him from office before January 20th um, in, in January of 2021. There there was a movement to get him pushed out of the White House like day after January 6th. So he had so much going on at that point in time. Obviously, this is a serious issue. And now if he does get reelected, um, you know, he, he, uh, this is something that he would do. But, um, you know, at the time, it was just 
He needs like a task Crazy. force. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, he to, does. to start going through all the names. Right. And then, I mean, it's actually really simple. You know what I'd do if I was Trump? I would say, give me a list of every misdemeanor charge and they are pardoned. Mm-hmm. Every single one, no matter what. Well, every he, charge should have been a misdemeanor. <laughs> no, not, not the guys who are, who are fighting cops. Yeah. Like if, if there, there were a yeah. lot of people who stormed the barricades and were actively fighting with cops. Not, like, nah, dude, you riot, you get charged with, char- uh, with those charges. Some of those guys probably were just misdemeanors. Like a guy who's on the front line screaming and yelling and like pushes a cop probably didn't get a felony. But if you're one of the guys who was like throwing stuff, I mean, there, there was a fire extinguisher that was thrown. They, they lied and claimed it killed a cop, didn't. Mm-hmm. But I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know how I feel about pardoning people who are actively fighting with, with cops. You know what I mean? Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.